other men. So this guy's a Pharisee, Nicodemus. But check out in the text here, notice um, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So he's part of the Sanhedrin. Now, probably the easiest way to understand that he's, just, he's a member of the board. He's not just a volunteer, he's a staff member. Okay? He, he, he works for God. He's, he's one of the rulers uh, of the Jews. All right, so now we know about him and where he's kind of coming from. This man, verse 2, came to Jesus by night and, and uh, he said to him, a rabbi, which means teacher. He recognized that Jesus was a unique teacher from God. Uh, interesting, it says in the text that he came. When did he come? By night. Now, there's lots of debate. It's funny when you study. I don't know what y'all were doing this week, but I was working on this. And, and, and uh, you can't believe the things people say. It just cracks me up. Oh, well, why, 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 why did he go by night? So, I mean, trust me, the uh, theories abound um, because he was afraid. He was a Pharisee, and the Pharisees hated Jesus, though not so much early in his ministry here, but some were like he was afraid. The Pharisees don't seek answers. They have answers. And, and so maybe he was afraid, or, or maybe he was eager. You know, he'd heard Jesus teach. I can't wait. I've got to talk to him. I'm important. I should be able to get a personal appointment. And, and, and maybe, maybe that's what it was. Maybe he just wanted a personal sit-down face-to-face. i got some real direct uh, personal questions. It's interesting. There's some uh, interesting pictures of this uh, Nicodemus thing. He might have looked like that. <laughs> or he might have looked like this for sure. Or uh, here's a, a, a well-known painting of him. Uh, there he looks more like, I just can't figure it out. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm not sure what his tone was exactly, uh, but here he comes uh, to Jesus. Oh, oh, by the way, on the night thing, just a little uh, for free here, um, it bothers me when people treat the understanding of Scripture like it's a piece of literature. How many people like um, had to study Shakespeare in school? Okay. When you're studying Shakespeare, it's a made-up thing, okay? Everybody understands that Romeo and Juliet, this stuff never happened, right? Do you get that? Okay, he made it up. So your, your uh, literature professor can say, well, you know, I think the reason why Romeo said that is because, and I think the reason why Shakespeare is doing that, how many people remember those classes? I think the reason why he's doing that is because his theme is um, when you're in the Bible, okay, even though it's the most beautiful piece of literature ever penned, we don't study it as a piece of literature. We don't go, well, the theme in John's gospel is light and darkness, so there, that's why he said that he went by night. No, duh, the reason he said it is because he did. Okay? He said that he went by night because... Yeah, it's not like a, a device. I hate stuff like that. I got so bent this week, and I knew you'd help me through it. I wrote in my notes, the Bible is not literature to be analyzed like Shakespeare. It's history. It's factual reporting of what happened. Now, bottom line is Nicodemus had some questions, and I want you to notice two things about here. Notice, first of all, that he came. That's a big deal right there. He came. He took action. He did something. He searched out his answers. One of the reasons, look up here, loved ones. One of the reasons why many people never truly come to know Jesus Christ personally is because they don't look for answers to their questions, okay? Now look at the truths of Christianity have satisfied the greatest minds in human history. Do you understand that? Uh, most of us, I don't, I don't know how many of y'all here are Mensa members, but I'm just going to say this. Most of us are not even capable of framing a question that there's not an awesome answer for so don't hide behind your pseudo-intellectual, well, I've got questions, i got questions, you know? And, and really, how serious are you about those questions? You know, I feel like if I stepped in front of you for a minute, you'd be like, i got questions, and, 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 and can you pass the Cheetos, and you're blocking the TV? <laughs> I don't think you're very serious about your questions, Okay. Do you understand? God's not put off. Look at, look at, from the flaming questions of Job to the stubborn show me of Thomas. God will go a long way in revealing himself to a person who really wants to know. And if you want to know, there are encyclopedias full of rational reasons to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. 
and that he did give his life as an atoning sacrifice for sin, and he did rise from the dead to prove that he's God, and he is alive today, and he is coming back, and he's changing people. This is all real. So, so the thing I like about Nicodemus is he came. He came, and, and then notice this. <laughs> it's so straightforward. Who did he come to? He came to Jesus, okay? So you see, some people, they want answers, but they, they go to the wrong place. I got, I need some, I got some questions. I, I think I'm going to go, I think I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over uh, to Hooters and have a beer and talk to my friends and find out my, really? That's your plan? Really? That's what you call the pursuit of, of, intellectually satisfying answers if God made you a person who needs to know complexity I'm a bit like that Kathy's like I get it I'm in let's do this and, and I, I love people like that I, I would more kind of lay awake and who am I and why am I here and where's all this going how many people are a bit more like that all right you've got to overcome the obstacles Give, turn off the TV, get some good books in front of you, and get your doubts settled. 